Hi folks, I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, where do I start? Well, first let's start off. Last video I did, I was on my way to the pig roast, which turned out to be um, <laughs> really fun and quite the experience. But let's take a look at what I brought to that little pig fest. Way back here, you'll see the Otter 3 rivet and a boker camp knife and of course the buck 532 which i ended up pull this out i ended up selling one of these at the party all i had to do is pull it out and a friend of mine ordered one right on the spot so i've actually sold two of these already um and let's see what else we got. The Otter 3 rivet. We'll take a look at the patina that I put on it. If you remember, it was brand new. So there's a nice smooth patina. It was a little rough. I kind of smoothed it out with some um, silver cleaner, silver and gold cleaner. But you'll see it's a nice smooth patina. I know Slick Slicer doesn't like patina on his blade, but... That came out pretty good. Smoked oak candle. And the Boker camp knife that I used. I can't, it could be a scout or a camp. But I used this to have me a couple of cold beverages. And I seen around out in the knife community that the uh, Camp King Rough Rider had a problem opening up. Um lifting caps well there was no problem with this old 1950s boker so but today we're going to celebrate the um equal end pattern cigar pattern um office knife i got a whole bunch out here oh first our um subscriber stuart harvey sent us a gift and i'm not sure how, how to pronounce these okapi okapi he calls it an old crappy but i'll be doing a video on that soon and also another new knife here is the shat morgan one of 30 folding hunter in marvel wood take a look at that so there's a couple new things i know i got lots to show and i've been running behind i know it's been over a week since i did a video but i'm here now and what we're going to show is a boker club gentleman but first let's do a spin around the block shall we and since I'm going to celebrate the equal ends. I figured I'd throw the rainbow of Victor Knox solos out there, which is always a nice sight. And you'll see some Remington and Winchester brass knives. Um, now, see, I got everything lumped in. These are office knives and cigar knives and some camp knives and scout knives. You'll see there's the uh, Camillus uh, GI utility knife up on the toad sticker box. Uh, the Warthog and the Girl Scout knife, the Ulster from 1930s that I still got to show. But look what's on the block there. That's some new stuff. I still got to show that um, Canal Street fixed blade. And, of course, you can't have a equal end without the Victorinox Farmer. But let's go. First, let's take a look and see if uh, John Henry's all right up on top. It's looking good. But let's go over here. I laid out some cigar knives, camp knives, and office knives. And, of course, my first-generation Bulldog Barlow in that nice um, pickle green. 
in the background. The first one here, this is a um, Triple Creek made by GEC. This is the 54 pattern. And this is truly a cigar knife in stag because that's a thick one there. That's a beauty. I did a video on that um, if you guys want to go back and look at it. Then down here on the left is a pale cutlery. Um, next to that is a Frank Buster. Uh, in the middle is a Frederick Herder. Uh, next to that is a Boker. And then another Pale Cutlery. And those are all vintage knives. Then some Equal End Office knives I got here. Um, this one's actually, even though it's small, it's considered a Scout. Let's see, don't want to be shaking too much. You'll see. I did a video on that. It's a Shat Morgan Premier Series. Really nice knife. And you guys seen I, I really like this one. <clears throat> so I put that out quite a bit. This is an old vintage um, George Wooston home with the cutout in Mother of Pearl. Let's see if we can get that to shine. <clears throat> but anyway, let's pull out the star of the show. They call it the Club Gentleman. It's a boker, it's in desert ironwood. And let's see what it looks like. How's that? Finally got the lighting right. I've been working on that all week too. That's why I haven't been able to get much done as far as doing the videos. But you'll see, now I've, I saw this on uh, Hobie's channel, so I'm going to give Hobie another shout out. I seem to buy a lot of knives that I see on his channel for some reason, um, including that beautiful Buck 532. But you'll see this is a um, brand new 2020 Boker. Um, equal end cigar shape, they call it a gentleman's knife. Very simple. As you'll see, the bolsters are just line bolsters. There's no pinch. But you can see the grain on the desert ironwood. Which really, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Here we go. See how they match that grain up, making it go horizontal. And as you'll see when I show you the other side, I, you know, I'm not really big. I don't care if um, both the covers, both sides match. But they did it bril brilliantly for this knife. Let's see, instead of shaking around, let's do it this way. You can pick up the grain and the figuring there. See, there's a knot right in the middle that I kind of like, right under... Um, this is the new Boker Shield with the black background, flat black, and no text, just the tree, and it's raised. So, but you'll see the pins are all nice and flush, beautiful bolsters, spear point, and you'll see it's um, N690, and I did some reading up on that steel. And supposedly it's comparable to VG-10, but they add a lot of cobalt to it. So it still has the hardness and the edge retention of VG-10, but it is much more superior in um, rust and corrosion prevention. So I read. So it's, it's really, once I get it in the hand, I'm going to show you it's actually a very light steel. And I think we'll even weigh this knife, too. But it's a nice classic spear point with a swedge up at the front. Match strike um, pull. And let's take a nice good look at that desert ironwood. Which is just gorgeous. Now I'll show you how they matched it up. 
We'll flip it over to the pile side. See how it's even got a knot right there? And once I get it in hand and flip it around, you'll see that they matched up the covers magnificently. Now I've been carrying this around for a week. I haven't really did any digging, just mainly opening packages and mail and stuff like that. But the blade's holding up really good. And once you see this thing in the hand, which we're just about ready to do, you'll see why this is already fast becoming one of my favorite carries. Let's take a look at it in the hand. Um, first, let's see if you can see, see the knot and the grain in there. And because it's desert ironwood, it comes up to a nice polish. It's a little bit of a gap here, but most of it is there's there's no light that comes through. Most of it is just because the brass liner's raised. See how I can hook my nail on that? But that don't bother me because this is such a gorgeous knife. And let's take a look at it and listen to it. We'll measure it real quick. I don't care if this video runs a little long. It's been a while since I did a video. So first let's take a measurement and then we'll, I'll show you the action on this is superb. Um, what's that, about three and three quarters? I don't know if I got it right. Yeah, it's about three and three quarters for the handle. And it's under three inches, so it's UK legal. About uh, two and three quarters little over that for length and the cutting edge is right at two and a half but now listen to this especially when it opens is that magnificent or what And this steel, I'm telling you, with this cobalt in it, I think it's a lot lighter than your normal steels. Um, it being N690. I think it's a powdered steel. Where they just melted down the powders. Not sure on that, I'm just guessing. It seems like if it broke in half, it'd have that... Uh, <coughs> that um, that look of being a powdered steel. Nice and clean inside. I did have to clean out the uh, the pivot. Closely centered. And we'll show you that gap again. But it's really not that much of a gap. It's more of a raised liner. Listen to that first, the opening up to the half stop. And when it closes, it, it comes back hard, but it stops. I mean, it snaps to the half stop. You'll see it actually go past and then kind of vibrate into the half stop. Gorgeous little knife. Now I'll show you how it matches up here. See, so you got a little bit of a light and a little bit of a dark tone. And you got your knot right here. Watch this. A little bit of a light and a little bit of a dark and a knot right there. 
So when you look at it, add it this way, it's a nice matchup. Of course, I'm going to compare it to the Taylor's Eyewitness um, Desert uh, Ironwood, <coughs> which is still much better, but this is, uh, this is a pretty good couple pieces of wood here. So let's do that now. Um, first, let's weigh it, because it's really light, like I said, with that blade. With that alloy. Look at that. 2.35 ounces. Super light. Single blade. Nice spear point. Let's throw a couple things out there to look at with it. Uh, let's put this here. Oops. Clean it up a little bit. <clears throat> so we got this. And let's throw out my Taylor's Eyewitness Barlow that's in Ironwood. Clean that up a little bit. And you'll see there's nothing that uh, compares to the Taylor Eyewitness Desert Ironwood. <clears throat> in fact, I've seen on Slick Slicer's uh, channel that uh, the Bakewell Cook Shop has some more Barlow's done in Desert Ironwood. And just to show you what bad desert ironwood looks like, here is a lion steel. We'll put that out there. <laughs> so... Some magnificent, in fact, let's put the garbage one up at the top. Sorry about that lion steel designer, whoever thought of doing iron wood like that. Although that's a really good knife, that's a, uh, it's a good beater. Three examples of desert iron wood. And let's flip them over. We don't need to flip this over. Yeah, I guess we will. But for as good as the Taylor Eyewitness Desert Ironwood is, I really like the... Because um, the Taylor Eyewitness is more kind of like a burl. Whoops. I do like the straight line action uh, with the one knot in it of the Boker. Beautiful piece. So we're coming up on 19 minutes here. Hope everybody's stuck with me. Stick with me, Pete. But anyway, there you go. Three beauties. So until next time, take care. Peace.